Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. We're here at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show at uh, the demonstration site, as usual, joined by Pat Lynch. How's it going, Pat? It's going really good. Today was beautiful weather. The crowds are great. We had great conditions for doing the field demonstrations that we had planned. Yeah. Now, this year, uh, variable uh, rate seeding. Um, you've done, uh, you know, the mobile plow, you've done tillage. Why variable rate seeding? Okay, the, the whole concept that Ginty had over 25 years ago is to prevent technology to the growers that is new or coming and the direction that farming can go. And variable rate seeding is something we've talked about for years. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to, to be able to change the population of hybrids? Because we know we go down the field and this is a great area in the field and there's 20% of it. You know, we should be dropping 36,000 plants or more in this area. And then you get into a lighter area or a really heavy area and never yields well. And that's Ontario soil. That is so typical all across Ontario. So in those parts of the field where we can't justify and don't need, and actually a higher population is going to give us a yield decrease, we want to significantly drop the population. And you know, Tobin, you mentioned there's only four planters here. That's because not everybody is buying into the concept yet. When you change to this concept, there is a cost to it. And then you've got to pencil it out. Is the extra savings and extra yield generated by this technology going to work on my farm? Certainly on the larger farmers, it's a no-brainer. It works. And larger farmers with variable land, absolutely it's a short payback time. Because, you know, one is the extra yield and the other is the cost savings by not over planting in areas where, where that part of the field doesn't, won't take that, that higher population. Pat, you mentioned we've got four pieces of equipment here. You know, you've uh, had a close up look at them. What do you think of the technology? Where are we at? Oh, so that is a great question because one of the problems with um, precision agriculture as well, I'd like to do precision agriculture, but by the time I hire somebody to do this and hire somebody else to do this, you know, they want $3 an acre and they want $4 an acre and suddenly I'm up to $10 an acre. But all of the planters that were presented here today, a farmer can take their yield map and set up their own population planting grid and they can change it on the go. So they will set it up, program it, and I don't want to say it's really simple, but I think even I could do it. So that gives you an idea how user friendly it is. And that's what the companies are doing. They know that if they want this technology to take off, it's got to be user friendly and it is certainly user friendly. Farmers can set their population, do it themselves, change it, and then we can come back to the same field in two or three years that, you know what, I'm going to tweak this a little bit and then get going. So that part is phenomenal. What about return on investment from what you've seen so far? The return on investment, I don't know. It is going to depend, but that would be an exercise that any producer could do. They take a look at the extra cost of doing this. They know their acres. Any uh, reasonable certified crop advisor or crop consultant that knows their hybrids and yield would be able to say, you know what, on this farm, you will reduce the total seed cost by this, and I expect we can increase the yield by this. And you go through it farm by farm, and it's fairly simple to come up. And you know, I've sat down with the farmers, you know, on this farm, you're probably looking at maybe a 15 plus dollar per acre. And then you go, to the, you know what? This farm is very similar to that. So let's see all the other farmers that are similar. So you start, well, you know, all of these farms here, so there's 700 acres and there's a, you know, $20 savings. So you put all of that together and you can fairly quickly come up with a number as to the payback. You know, how many years do you need to get the payback from this investment? Last question for you, and it's a big one, and that is, you know, this is multi-hybrids, you know, and it's a long story, and I know you could go for a long period of time, but, you know, the racehorse versus the workhorse, any thoughts on how you put those two together? Well, you know what, I was helped involved in the developing of the racehorse, uh, workhorse concept. That's what I did my master's degree back way on when, and I think the racehorse, workhorse, is a marketing technology rather than an agronomy technology. The agronomists talk about it. The reality is that, you know, it comes down to the seed industry people know where their hybrids work best and they tell the farmers where the hybrids work best, they try, and it doesn't work. The farmer will tell them in 12 months, that didn't work, and they'll come up with something better. So the, the whole concept here is gonna be the agronomist selling the seed, knowing how the populations 
are needed for each hybrid. And I guess I'm not a really big fan of multiple hybrids in the same plant or unit. I think pick your hybrid, change the population. You've already changed the fertility going down there, and let's see what we get. And then once we're on top of all that, then let's talk about race horses, work horses, and punny horses, and every other kind of horse you want to talk about. But, you know, we'll talk about that another day.